Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I have another easy 30 minute Dutch oven dish for you. And this is a great one for you guys that are just starting out. So stay tuned. One of the things that a Dutch oven does great is braising and cooking low and slow or you know uh, slow and, and like a pressure cooker you know that lids really heavy it holds that moisture inside of your of your Dutch oven and it makes things speed up cooking I swear and you could do this today's dish it was going to be some hearty beef stew we're going to add a couple twists to it a real backwards gourmet twist to it but we're going to do the beef stew and this is works perfect on your campfire where you're not necessarily on heat control so right behind me over here on the dutch oven table i got a full chimney of kingsford going going to be a short cook time like i said this is a 30 minute dish so short cook time so you could do this on your campfire wherever you're at camp you know you got that nice bed of coals uh, so you don't have to worry about getting that pot really too hot. We have a lot of moisture in there and more heat is just going to speed up the process even more. So let's get after it. So here's what you're going to need for this today's dish. I found these, they called them flank steaks today at the grocery store. They looked really good. They got some fat on them, which I like for my beef stew, but use whatever you got. And hey guys, you hunters, feel free to substitute venison, elk, moose, whatever you got for this. Um, to me, this is, it's still got the bones in it that look like they just took short the ribs and cut them the other way and called it something else. I don't know. But at any way, it looks like really good uh, with nice marbling in there think they're going to be awesome all right next thing you're going to need let's get through the basics first here's some carrots we just pulled those out of the garden yesterday we got a nice sweet onion also got some of them growing it's going to be a little while a couple of cloves of garlic these green peas i just picked those out of the garden this week also and shell those we have we we got 15 pounds of peas the other day all right we got some red potatoes use whatever kind of potatoes you like i have some of my homemade brisket uh, brisket and steak rub try to leave you the link to how to make that down in the description box below I got some cornstarch some better than bouillon uh, beef broth uh, Worcestershire sauce and balsamic vinegar that's one of my little twists to this so and you're gonna need you a couple of knives or one knife or your hunting knife or your uh, whatever you got okay today we're going to use our Dow strong knives and I'm leaving you a nice uh, link and promo code in the description box below. So I wanted to show you real quick a great cast iron find that I come across this uh, uh, past week. And that's these trivets right here. Uh, these are for sitting your hot pans on the table. And it, you know, they got little feet that stick off. Oh, there so that holds your pan up off of your table so you don't burn your table with a hot pan and it's a matching set George and Martha Washington I paid 14 bucks for the both of them so we're posting that over over on the Facebook book backwards gourmet Facebook group uh, cast iron Facebook group also so if you have not yet checked out the Facebook group for the backwards gourmet I'll we'll try to remember to leave you a link for that also Right over here we have the Dutch oven, large Dutch oven table set up and I have a full chimney of Kingsford going there. My uh, Dutch oven tool standing by here. Today we're going to use, I think for this amount, we're going to use our 10 inch Dutch oven. So if we, we'll have to find it in all this uh, cast iron we have here. If you guys haven't been keeping up, yeah, this is our new studio and yeah, up here we have them all hanging to kind of keep them out of out of uh, the way so there's our uh, tin lodge shallow right there mm. so my charcoal is getting really ready and again I'm going to use this um, 
I'm, I'm naming it now the uh, the backwards gourmet one line charcoal method. Hey, if uh, if Minion can uh, call his method the Minion method for smoking, we can call this the backwards gourmet method for Dutch ovens. And just because um, we need the heat, what I'm going to do also grab my tongs here. Um, just to keep that even hotter and to get hot faster for right now I'm gonna go ahead and put that forward the lodge four and one right there on top of the hottest part and then we'll get our Dutch oven over there and get it preheat Put a little olive oil in this Dutch oven just to help out with the facilitate the cooking a little bit. You can see it's already starting to smoke a little. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting that meat in there, start browning it off. Day. I want to keep these onions in chunks so I'm going to cut it with the grain I call it. Cut across the grain on anything you want those onions to dissolve in. But anything you want them to stay in pieces go ahead and cut it with the grain of the onion. Just like that. notice this Dalstrong deflector vegetable slicing knife that the the pieces of potato do not stick to the blade and that's the reason for this design and it just glides through them but usually if you use a regular knife those pieces would really stick to your blade and they want to pop up every time so this makes a really nice work of cutting vegetables like potatoes, squash, and other solid vegetables like these. So now that it seems that my pot's starting to cool down a bit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop it right down. That's why we use this one line method. We can drop it right down, right on those coals. Give those another quick little stir. 
And you see those little pieces of the bones in there. That's going to just add flavor to this. So that's getting very close to being brown. Make sure they all get a good amount of little heat. The browner you get them, the nicer your, your gravy will be at the end. Alright, so now that we got some good brownness going on them, I'm going to grab our onions from right over on the cutting board, toss them in there, I'm going to get a little brownness on them onions, let them get down in there, and start getting cozy with our beef. And that little brownness on them onions is also going to help with the color of our broth. So about time I stir those onions the first time, go ahead and dump my potatoes in there. Remember we're trying to cut down on time here, right? Alright, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get our lid. I'm going to put it right on there. And that's going to capture the steam and start speeding this process up. And in a little bit, we're going to take some coals and put on top. picking up a little brownness on those potatoes. They smell awesome. Try to make this a 30 minute dish. Alright, so we're not gonna waste much time. I'm gonna go ahead and put in about two cups of water. And we're gonna put in our garlic. Put in all of our garlic. I'm waiting to this point to put in the garlic. Um because I don't want to burn the garlic. I took my four and went away and I should have stepped in here. Get all my garlic in there. And all my carrots. And I am going to wait on the little green peas since they're very tender. Gonna wait on that a little bit. And that's gonna turn this into a braise. We're going to load up the top of that oven with the rest of our coals. So right now is when you can kind of throw up a, if you're doing this on a campfire, you can kind of throw a log up next to it. We want to get that thing up and boil as soon as possible. So five additional minutes, I'm going to go in there. And go ahead and put in our peas. Give them a stir down in there. Give them just until it comes back up the bowl. We'll want to thicken this up, and it's going to be just about ready. Those potatoes are getting nice and soft. You see, I can crush them right against the side of the pot, and I don't want them to turn to mush. So just as soon as I start seeing the steam coming back out the edges of that pot, that means it's back up to boil. After I put those peas in, I'm going to go ahead and add this cornstarch. Um, 
this is going to be a, a by eye thing guys I'm not going to give you a measurement on that because it's going to depend on how thick you want your stew alright and I add a little bit of time I stir I wait a little minute a few seconds it'll it's thickens pretty quick and I usually end mine when it's just a little thinner than I want it to be at the finish okay and that looks just about perfect again we're overlapping a lot of this cook and we're doing that so that everything comes together a within our 30 minute time frame that we set at the beginning and B that everything is ready at the same time and that's why we did it in the order that we did all right I'm gonna put that lid back on in about five minutes that's ready it's been 31 minutes since we started the, we put the first ingredient in the Dutch oven and this joker is ready you see that nice dark rich broth we got there all right this is the time you want to check your seasoning get it their salt level where you want it i would not put any salt in this dish before you check it okay um that beef broth does have a bit of salt even though i use a low sodium kind but if you didn't use a low sodium kind or you use the regular cubes to make your broth that's going to bring a lot of salt okay if you guys watch me enough you know that i try to cook low salt just because mrs backwoods does not like a lot of salt but that looks awesome and it's ready to serve Yeah, we finished the whole dish with one chimney of charcoal and about 35 minutes. We went over by five minutes. Sorry, but you know, if you guys got them campfire coals, probably going to go a lot faster. Okay. Um, but that is a beautiful, beautiful stew. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Ooh, hot. Mmm. That is amazing. And that little bit of balsamic vinegar we put in there, that definitely brightens up the whole dish. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Plus, it never hurts to have very fresh vegetables right out of your own garden. If you got those, definitely bring them along with you if you're going to do this. If not, it'll still be good just not quite as good as you grill them yourself. So thanks for coming along while we making this great beef stew dish in about 30 minutes in a Dutch oven. If you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right over there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. Gonna be right there. 
And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it'll be right up there. We'll see you next time. So thanks for joining us on this great, simple beef stew ditch. And oh, I'm like Joe Biden right now.